Hello everybody, check it out. We're finally above 70 degrees. I should say we're above 60. It is the middle of March. So this is the middle of the month garden tour. Now I'm gonna really try to get through this quick because we're just starting to do things. So there's not a lot of changes. I haven't really set up anything new here. There are some things growing, you know, coming up. I've got dill and different things coming up in some of the pots and things are greening up. But right now, nothing is new. So really don't, I don't need to show anything. And of course, I've had a few people ask about the side. About a year ago, I was gonna set up lettuce and different things and I'm not gonna set it up on the side here. The problem is this particular part of the property against the house here doesn't get any sun. It doesn't get sun in the summer, spring, winter, or fall. And though I did grow a lot of lettuce down here, they kind of bolted and didn't do that good. So I'm going to use this for something else. Right now, I'm not going to be growing in here. Gary did bring that stand home, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on my deck with that. I'm so excited he found that in the trash. But anyways, let's continue on. Like I said, nothing new. Things are starting to come up. There's a kale. The dinosaur kale I stuck in there. Look at the green sorrel coming up really good. It's com coming back now that the weather's warming up. Here is where I did the tomato cloning and I stuck a pot in here with some cuttings. Now this one's doing really well. This one actually looks really good too. These are, oh, there's a flower. I don't want flowers on here. I have to get the flowers off because it won't grow tomatoes yet. I want it to set root. Put all its energy into rooting. But this is doing good. The pot is halfway in the compost here. This has got kitchen scraps. It's not even broken down, just kitchen scraps, leaves from the garden. It's covered with a little bit of native soil and broken down wood chips and then wood chips on the top. What I'm hoping is a couple of those cuttings will take off and then I'll have brown berry tomatoes growing there. And again, I leave it in the pot so this way when I water, I know that the pot is getting water. And see when you put something on top, that's all wet. It acts as a ground cover and it holds it, the water in there. And this tomato kind of made it through, but I don't think it's gonna really make it. I'll probably end up taking that out. And here I'm gonna set this up with more tomatoes. That's a strawberry mint. But right now it's not set up. And this one is just my peppermint that I'm going to fix up and get going because I love the peppermint. That's just beautiful. The table here that I have my ginger on is has not been planted yet. Right now the stevia is all coming up. This is all stevia coming up from the roots. And I'm going to have the whole wall with stevia. And why? Because it grows really good here. So if it's happy, then I'm happy. And then I have all the stevia I want. And here it gets morning sun and we're still early. And then as the day goes on, it's shaded and it, it does well here. These are just pots, more cuttings of brown berry that I showed in my other video. I'll put a link down below and you'll be able to see that. This one's probably not going to make it, but some of these will. I want to really get them out of water. Even though you can root tomatoes in water, you have to keep changing the water. They seem to root so much better when you put them in soil. See how they sprung back when they were really dead looking when I pulled, put them in here? So all I need is a couple. I just don't want anything to bother it. A couple of them going and I'll probably leave them in the pot. It's got really big holes underneath. Just stick the pot somewhere and the tomatoes will grow from there. Let's go. I'm going to show you one thing. Let's go down here. Now here are the fig trees and this is the back of my garden. And these are the two fig trees we definitely wanted to keep. They grew huge in one year. It was amazing. That's because we had really good compost in there and it fed the roots of the tree. And no joke, they grew in one year. So this is the one that's a very good fig and the figs were really sweet on it. And I'm gonna do some trimmings on some of these. And the big one down here with the big trunk, that was the one that tasted like strawberries. So I wanna kind of keep it low and uh, so it doesn't shade my garden too much. And I want to get a lot of cuttings off of this. Yeah, I hope I have the time to do it. The other fig tree that was really bad, there were two more. I had planted four here. One of them was really bad. We took that out to the ground. And the other one, which is still alive, none of the figs were good on that one. But the brown berries growing on it, 
So Gary did a video on what he did with that tree, and that's for the tomatoes. So if he gets that up soon, I'll put the link underneath. If not, watch for it, because he's using that fig tree for something. Okay, let's go back into the garden. Isn't that beautiful? Spring is here, finally. Okay, let's go back into my garden. Oh, this is the sprouting broccoli. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's the back side of my garden. All right, let's go back into the garden. Now we're back in my main garden. This is where the brown berry, I did the video on it. It died. It just couldn't take the freeze anymore. The plant just gave up and it died back. Even though its feet were not too wet, everything in this property was soaking wet with all the rain and the cold, it still died back, couldn't take the cold. So brown berry doesn't do that well in the cold. Neither does midnight snack. That one doesn't do that well either. So I've got the cuttings off of that. It's no loss. I'm going to clear all this out and get something else going in here. I'm not sure yet what. Spring is just starting. We're not even in the spring yet. So I'll get something soon in there. And then of course here, this dinosaur kale is so damaged. It was so heavy that I'm going to do a lot of cuttings off of it, which I'm already doing. I take cuttings, you just take a piece and stick it in some soil and it grows. Oh, look at the bees. We haven't even had any bees for the longest time. This is another one of those solar fountains I made. So the bees are out, that's a good sign. And I've been seeing lizards around. Haven't seen litter lizards in months. I think I saw one really dark brown lizard that was really cold. And now I'm starting to see more and more lizards. I put a mushroom plant in that soup container down there. And look at that, it's growing. So I could either leave it there or move it someplace else. I probably will end up moving it. Okay, let me swing around. Here are the cuttings that I ended up putting here of the purple kale, and they're doing really good. There's three cuttings in there and some collard in there. And we'll see what happens with it later. Green sorrow, something got to it. So I put a basket over it. And then there's celery, celery growing. And then that's a strawberry plant. It's not strawberries, it's just a green strawberry plant. And then of course this is the mushroom plant. And that doesn't fend well too well in the winter, but I mean it just lost some of its leaves. It's gonna make a comeback. All this has to be freshened up. I haven't done anything. A lot of trimming has to be done. A lot of things have to be done in the garden. All in all, the kale did really good. And the birds had plenty of food. They chewed up my kale. Oh, they would just sit here and chew and chew and chew. I saw them this morning. They just sit here and chew and chew. I can stop them. I haven't gotten serious yet. I can definitely stop them. But you know what? It, there's been so much. I haven't really worried about it. But yes, they make it look like lace. It looks like lace. Now, interesting enough, this is the purple sprouting broccoli. I'm sorry, this is the, yeah, purple sprouting broccoli. The trunk is purple. I haven't gotten any broccoli yet on it, but we use the leaves in all our green drinks. It's beautiful. They don't touch it. Notice how beautiful the leaves are? So the birds don't like to taste the broccoli. They prefer dinosaur kale, which is interesting because in the beginning they didn't eat the dinosaur kale. They do change their taste. I'll warn you on that. They wouldn't eat Swiss chard and then suddenly they found out they like Swiss chard. Now they found out they like dinosaur kale. And look, they don't even touch the curly kale. And they don't touch it. So they don't touch the curly kale. Then I've got some lemon verbena and I've got more lemon verbena here. So it's starting to make a comeback again. That's a plant that dies back when it gets really, really cold. Some more dinosaur kale that I'm rooting, which already has rooted. I put some tool over it. And here are the strawberry towers that I'm starting to set up. Like I said, I haven't done anything yet. Very little. I'm coming in here and I'm doing more pulling and composting and getting rid of things. I know some people say, oh, your garden looks terrible. I've had people say that. Well, you know what? My garden is not for beauty. Even though I can fix it up, anybody can fix up their garden. My garden's for food. So as long as I know I don't have to go buy any greens and I've got all the greens I want, I'm happy with that. So this is the sprouting broccoli, see? I've got lots and lots of sprouting broccoli. And we've got collard all through here. Look at the trunk on that, you've seen it. it 
grows like a bonsai, all different ways. But I've got so much to do. The mint is just starting to make a comeback because mint is another one that dies back all winter. And here's a pepino that kind of, well, it didn't get eaten. It might have been growing up against something. It got a little damaged, but that's okay. I want to clean this all up. Avocado tree that came up in my compost. I really don't want it. And then, of course, my dazzling blue kale. Isn't that beautiful in there? I covered it to keep the birds off of this one. So I have some nice kale for myself to use. And then, of course, that one. Let's see what else. There's the curry plant. More collar that came up from seed. Let me show you back here. There's collar that came up from seed right there underneath the water fountain. See, the fountain, when I clean it, dumps in that brick, and it grew there. So a lot of this stuff comes up from seed on its very, very own. Let's see what else. See, this is all spearmint on the bottom, and it's just starting to come through, which is okay. We use a lot of mint. Believe you me, I can see in my skin. I need to start drinking mint tea again. I haven't had mint tea for a long time. Look down here. Let's see. I noticed this. I just dumped this, and look at this. These little plants, I believe those are peppers coming up. I'll have peppers and tomatoes coming up, which means spring is here. The seeds want to grow now in the compost. Look at that raw compost, kitchen scraps, straight from the kitchen the other day, and they're already growing in their tomatoes and peppers. There is the field of collard. I don't even know where the trunk is. It's somewhere under there. And again, another plant that the birds don't touch. Isn't that interesting? They don't touch it. I think I'm going to make a corned beef and cabbage, but without cabbage, I'm going to chop up a bunch of leaves I'm going to throw in there and use that. Okay, let's see. What else? This is parsley. It's gone to seed. And I think I said on the last one I was going to collect the seed. I have not. But I will. I will soon. And I'm going to swing you over here. Like I said, nothing new. I want to get out the sweet potato. This is where the midnight snack was, and it did not make it. See, certain tomato varieties will do fine in very cold weather. They're not going to grow in the snow. But in very cold weather, and some varieties won't. So the sun golds, which are right there, did very, very well. And then there was another variety, an Italian variety. Um, that one did really, really well. So it's, it depends on the plant. And then there was a brown berry back here. If you can see, it's almost dead. But somehow, because it's pushed up against the wall, which is on the other side, that plant made it. Is it going to survive when spring I guess it is. It's got a lot of new growth on the top. So that one just needs to be cleaned up. And that one made it also in a pot like the other one, but just a little warmer in the position it was, even with all the very, very cold, wet weather we had. We had the coldest, wettest winter in history, they say. They have never seen that much rain and that much cold. We didn't even hit anything close to 70. And then at night, of course, we were in the 30s and 40s for weeks, literally like almost two months. So that's why it was harder on the plants, because it was something that doesn't happen here. The chocolate mint, it fended really well in here. So this plastic container must have stayed warm enough. And so it did really, really well. And that's strawberry mint. I don't use that for tea. I don't like it. And then there's garlic chives. That made it through the winter. And of course, that's just old celery growing through there. A bunch of walking onions are in there because I just threw a bunch of baby bulbs in there and they're just hanging in there and a little bit of sage so like I said I haven't done anything yet I'm doing more cleaning I've got to trim up all my eggplant even though I've got a lot of eggplant starting and it's on the other side as well and there's more eggplant in here see all the eggplant the eggplant is starting so that's a good sign look at the tree collards are they amazing they were what six inches tall last year there's one there and then there's one down there and just amazing they amaze me how big they get of course this is the sun gold tomato and look at this tree collard this one needed a metal stake this thing is about seven feet tall and the leaves are milder tasting than regular collard i think i'll throw that in my cabbage in my corned beef and then here's more blue dazzling kale see they don't touch this 
maybe this is too open for the birds. The birds find the place where they feel comfortable to sit. If they don't feel comfortable to sit, they're not going to eat your plants. That's why people put spinners out and stuff. If they're not happy with it, then they're not going to eat your plants. If something scares them off. Down there, where I'm feeding them and I've got the water fountains, they know they can hide in a lot of brush and they can eat and then dash into something. And that's why they're eating more down there than they are here. It must be just too open. They don't touch anything here. So everything here, like I said, all in all, is the same. I have lots of work and I want to do a lot of work. Of course, here are the papayas, so hopefully we'll have some soon. I don't know if any of them will make it on this one. This is the one I said I'm not going to touch it. But what I do want to do is I want to start taking cuttings. I heard that you can take cuttings off of papayas and grow papaya trees. And if that's true, you'll get a clone of the, your favorite plant. So I want to do cuttings because normally I grow all ours from seed. Here's a strawberry tower. I set that up. I believe I did a video on that. I stuffed it with leaves and then topped it with wood chips. And look at this. I didn't even see that. Look at that. I just did this. Oh, that's cool. And I haven't even gone out and bought any more strawberry plants yet, which is something I want to do. So let's see. The Moringa has not really done anything yet. Hopefully we'll see some leaves coming soon because now they say the weather's going to warm. And let's go through the gates. You know, I found out how good rosemary is and I really have to start doing something with rosemary. It grows like a huge bush here and I've got a whole bunch. I've got one there, I've got one out front. I've got them everywhere and look at the orange trees. Actually, this one is the cocktail grapefruit. All the trees are blooming and it smells so good. Let's see, so you've seen everything in the garden. This is a cutting. You know how I showed you all how to clone your tomatoes? Well, that's what I wanted to show you here. See, my beautiful tomato died away. Again, from the cold and the freeze and the winter. A couple tomatoes lingering on. But while it was dying, I broke off a piece before it was dead. And I put it in here. I just shoved it in there. See, it's just a piece. And look at this. It's already going to grow tomatoes. And it made it. It rooted and it grew. And that's all I did was just stick a hole. What you would want to do is get a long piece. Tomatoes will root all the way up the stem. They'll root anywhere. So put, you know, a good four, five, six inches in the ground. It doesn't matter. I take a stick, just poke it in, in the pot, drop the tomato in there, cover it up, and then water it real good. So this one made it. So I'm hoping that one will take off and grow all along here, and I'll probably end up putting more tomatoes here. But they're just so incredibly easy to propagate tomatoes if you wanted to. Here's our papayas. Again, these did really, really well because it was sheltered by the weeping bottle brush we've got here. So even though it's the breeze and the cold air was coming up the canyon, it was just enough to shelter this tree. This tree got no frost or cold damage. This one got hit a little bit. See where the leaves are? See how it's coming through? That one got hit a little bit, but all in all, it's doing well and it's got a whole new crop. Not just the bottom crop, it's got a whole new crop coming on the top. That one did well. See, Ros rosemary. And this one did not, but it's going to make a comeback. We're not worried about it. It's making a comeback. It's got new growth, even new flowers coming. Still has the fruit on that one. Gary's needs to take off and eat. But that one's going to make a comeback. So we're not worried about it. It it came, you know, it got all the breeze, the cold air from the canyon, no real protection, but it still made it. And that one I noticed, the trunk is getting thicker. So this one might take off too. So we'll see. Now let's walk over to the wall. As I'm getting to the wall, remember this? This was the lake. It was a lake for, what, six weeks we had a lake here because it was just the water running off the mountains where it was ending up here. But now we haven't had any rain for a while. They say we'll have rain next week, so we'll see. I want to set up the bathtub. I have not done it yet. I haven't done anything here. There's been nothing. These tomatoes, mm, I'll clean them up and see if they made it. I mean, they grew tomatoes all through the winter and they did really, really well. And of course, here's my Moringa, which did great against the wall. 
yeah, it's got very few leaves on it, and I still use the leaves for our green drink. I just kind of pull it down and grab some leaves, but all in all, this Moringa did fine. Again, it's warmer against the wall, so it's a microclimate here. And with the microclimate, look how good the celery did. The Swiss chard made it through. The walking onions were not affected. Everything did well. Even the eggplant did okay. And I see a lot of new growth coming in on the eggplant too. And the weeds are starting to see south thistle. And I use that in our green drink. That we leave for the birds because it throws a little seed. And then I use it in my green drink and it works out perfect. Look at that, it's so beautiful, green and shiny. Okay, let's walk to the truck bed. Now I'm at the truck bed. Again, haven't done anything. I'm starting to throw leaves in that container back there. So I'm probably gonna grow something soon in there. And, you know, I kinda like it the way it is. I, I keep going back and forth on what I'm gonna do in here, but I've got three different types of Swiss chard growing in here. Plus I've got walking onions and look at the garlic chives in there, they're so good. Yeah, I've got the green, I've got the bright scarlet red, and then I've got the ones that are green with the red stems and red veins. So I do like it the way it is, and there's a ton of baby Swiss chard all through here that I could just, with a spoon, just take out and move it anywhere. So I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do here. And yes, look at this. The tree I wanna pull out, the avocado tree has got flowers. I don't know if it's gonna do anything. But now that it's got flowers, I guess I'm gonna to have to see if it throws any fruit, which would be interesting because it'd be a very young tree. I have eaten some of the avocados from the rootstock, and it's not that good. They're kind of stringy. Yeah, you could probably put it through a sieve because it tastes good, but it's stringy. It's kind of weird. It's like you're eating a fruit with threads in it. So I don't know what that's gonna be. I don't even know if it will throw fruit. So if this tree wants to live, it better throw fruit. And if it doesn't throw fruit and the flowers fall off, I think the tree is gonna be dropped. Because I wanna be able to grow food now, I don't wanna to have to wait and see what happens. So we'll see what happens. And again, I've got red Swiss chard here and the red and green covered so the rabbits don't chew it up. I probably should just put a fence around it and decide what I'm gonna do. I don't know, but it's growing. I mean, if something happened and I didn't have any other food, I do have that. So I think with that, I, I wanted to keep this really as short as possible because there isn't much going on and we have been working. I've been setting up my deck. Gary's working in his garden like mad. It's not like we're not working, but we haven't really planted anything new yet. I've got seedlings in the house that I'm starting. I'm trying to think of what else I wanna plant in the garden, but as far as food, we had all the food we needed this winter. So I'm quite happy with that. I mean, we had all the greens, we had fruit, we had papayas, Gary picked papayas. So it was really good. But the green drink, I try to make sure I get a green drink a day in me. And I need to get that green, the new green drink up that I do. Because I went for my blood tests, I went for all my tests. I went for a bone density scan, and you know what they told me? I'm better than I was the last time I went. That's a good thing. So I know that greens and fresh food to get all the true nutrients and vitamins and minerals and enzymes and everything is important. So I'm not telling everybody or anybody what to eat or what not to eat. But what I would like would have everybody eat something good. I don't care if you're growing just a little bit of dinosaur kale, let's say in a patio, and you eat one leaf. Do you realize that one leaf? I mean, that one leaf is gonna give you so much because it has so much. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize is just a little bit. I'm not perfect, but I'm far from perfect when it comes to eating. But I will say, I eat something green every day. Even if I don't cook something green for some reason, whatever the reason is, I do come in the garden, I grab some broccoli or some greens and eat it. So that's kind of, oh, look at this. We got little bush tits right in front of me. And they're looking for insects. And that's what I want. I want the insect eaters here. So they eat all the little bugs that are eating my plants. So you don't want to spray because you want the birds to come in and take care of it. 
And you want to keep things as organic as possible if you can. If you had to go buy something, then buy it. You know, if you had a problem, you got to take care of your problem whatever way you need to. But this has worked really good here. You feed the seed eaters, they come in, the insect eaters come in to see what's going on. And so far, everybody's happy. So with that, I'm so happy spring's here. I love the sun. The sun is my favorite thing. Some people love the rain. I love the sun. So with that, I hope I kept it short enough. Hopefully in two weeks, we'll, we'll start to see changes as I clean up in the yard and I'll make Gary go down with his camera and go do something in his yard because I know things are changing down there. And we'll keep this going and I want you to see my deck. I've got so many plans for the deck. I'll end up with more food on my deck and I won't even want to come out to my garden. Well, haha, I love my garden. I love sitting here and watching the birds. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And the butterflies have been coming through here by the thousands. It's been beautiful for the past few days, which gave me encouragement that spring is here. And they're flying by right now as I'm here. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow, everybody. Bye-bye.